Hard mode in the attic is really big on rockets. Either they have the regular danger replaced with rockets, as in this opening area here, the rolling robots in an area will be upgraded to shoot rockets, or rocket launchers will just be added in for the hell of it. You can see I'm playing it a little fast and loose, mostly because of my impatience, and I really need to make it clear how lucky I got in this opening section. Quite a few times I really should have gotten hit. You might be wondering why there's a laser here when a spike patch already existed. That's why. I think this only happened once at the beginning of the reception, but here having to make a tight jump between two dangers is quite common, and I really hope it's not going to get any more so in the future levels. It probably will, but a man can dream. It's normally not that much trouble to get this chaser drone out of the way, but on the first pass it just would not leave me alone. Annoying deaths brought to you by Blue Spikes Incorporated. The timing on that jump is incredibly precise, more so I think than anything else we've seen thus far in hard mode. See what I mean about the rockets? It just seems unnecessary. The lesson to be learned here is that the lower path is an option. Might seem obvious, but there can be an incredible temptation to always choose the highest or shortest possible path, and here it's annoying to try that when running around the spikes is completely valid. Well, that was stupid. Let's try that again. Oh, not on your life. I don't care about the stars that much. This is a nice little puzzle, playing on the player's natural inclination to destroy the translucent blocks. It's a small change to the original design, but a meaningful one. If you aren't good at doing the back and forth beam ladder, this part gets a lot harder. Thankfully, since hard mode isn't unlocked until beating the game, it's almost guaranteed that you will be good at it. Having said that, the rockets don't make things any easier. Those blue spikes are a real annoyance. Also, the roller now spits rockets. Of course.
God damn it, I'll hit something one of these days. So after a couple of minutes of experimentation, I eventually didn't figure out how to get past the spikes at all. Instead, I got lucky and had a life vest drop, giving me the confidence to just jump for it. Which, as it turns out, was the correct answer all along. Sneaky developers. This is what we call a pickle. That is what we call luck. More spikes. This one I really like because it involves more precise control of yourself in the beam. You'll see what I mean just as soon as I figure it out. It shouldn't take long. Yep, there it is. Now we just have to time it correctly. In the meantime, a fun fact about the developers Might and Delight. Some number of them, possibly all of them, are from the team that made the Bionic Commando Rearmed games a few years ago. I never played those games, they were apparently notoriously hard though, so I guess this sort of thing is right up their alley. This thing. Far as I remember, it doesn't appear for about 90% of the normal mode, and even then appears for a single section. Now it's just dropped in here like it ain't no thing. And since we only have one bomb, the solution here is to manipulate the chandelier to destroy it. At this point, I believe I said, oh are you kidding, out loud. Okay, I lucked through this on normal mode, but there's two of them here now, so this time I'll have to luck through it again. Alright, whatever. Moving on. There's nothing really different about the giant roller, except that it takes twice as many hits to kill. I would have done this faster, but for some reason I never clued into the fact that I should really be jumping over it right before it turned so it would be firing at me as it went from left to right. As such, it took twice as long to kill than it needed to. Well actually, four times as long, since the three hits on normal mode felt like a perfect length for that fight to go on. Well actually, eight times as long, because uh, as you'll see in just a moment,
I'm making quite a few close calls here. Yep. Oh, hi, let's just float you over there. Even that thing shoots homing rockets. The level is obsessed with them. The reason I'm being overly cautious here, if you can't see it, is that there's a spike patch on the right side of the gap we need to get through. Okay, what do you think the chances are that those rockets home? Because those rockets totally home. No idea how I got through that unscathed. Again, no idea how I'm getting through without getting hit. Perhaps charging forward with reckless abandon is the correct thing to do. Oh, like hell. Actually, I think I can do better than that. Let's try that one more time. It might just be me, but I think the DJ's music is a little more pronounced in hard mode. I got bored and started sniping those blocks. Turned out to be a good decision.
here you can really see what fits naturally and what doesn't. Like the moths in the caves before, the chaser drone doesn't really do well in this area. Um, okay, I'll take that. Another tight jump between two obstacles, and for some reason I just can't get this one this time. After three minutes of trying and two attempts to get up to the secret area, I finally manage it with help from what I'm pretty sure is a collision bug. Now you might think that this is going a lot faster than normal mode, but that's nothing. Check out the top right corner. Because of things like talking to the NPCs and searching for secrets, I don't know exactly how much longer I spent on hard mode than I did normal mode here, but I can at least say that on normal mode I took about 20 minutes to get from start to finish of the attic. On hard mode, even though I ignored NPCs and secrets for the most part, I took about 25 minutes, so take from that what you will. Looking forward to the dining halls on hard, that's sure to be a riot.